So we've talked about the three term contingency. These are the basic building blocks of ABA, sometimes referred to as ABC, sometimes referred to as SRS, um, and both of them are referring to the same thing. It's looking at that middle behavior, whether it's a challenging behavior that you want to decrease or whether it's a skill that you want to increase, you're looking at that behavior and response and what happened before either the antecedent or the instruction or the SD and what happened after, you know, some sort of consequence reinforcement um, that acts to either increase or decrease the likelihood of that behavior happening again in the future. Now, some people talk about this fourth term contingency or the four term contingency. What's that fourth contingency? What is that? Um, it's what we refer to as an establishing operation. Some people, because ABA people like acronyms, you know, we call it the EO. Sometimes you've heard of, heard of it called the MO, which is the motivating operation. Um, you know, using those terms interchangeably, typically. Um, so the establishing operation is really about motivation, creating motivation so that they want what you're presenting to them. So for instance, you know, if I'm having a student and I'm teaching skill acquisition and I'm teaching the student to, I don't know, ask for tickles or ask for jumps or arm squeezes or something like a rough and tumble, you know, I don't know if they really want it. So I'm going to test the waters a little bit first, right? And I might provide an initial tickle really quickly, kind of just a, a quick one, whatever, let's see. And if they indicate that they want more, then I can start my three-term contingency. So that EO is really just setting up that event to, to make somebody want that. Yeah, it's really taking into account motivation, which is a huge component that doesn't really account for in the typical ABC. You know, you're not thinking about what they're motivated for. And what they're motivated for plays a really big impact on the likelihood of you eliciting that behavior or decreasing that behavior. Because if something happened before to change their motivation, um, you know, for example, if they were having a bad morning and, you know, they came in and everything was going wrong and they're in a bad mood and they were tired, and then you present them with a demand as the antecedent, they may be more likely to want to escape from that demand if they were already motivated for escape um, and that changes to you know a different day when that they're not as motivated for escape presenting that demand may not result in escape you know an example that um, I use with with my own kids when when they were little there was no TV during the week and they weren't allowed to watch anything and so they were super motivated when it came to the weekend you know it's sometimes what we call um, the balance of satiation and deprivation they were you know in some way deprived of that so when it came the weekend and they had to do XYZ in order to access that, they were a lot more motivated to engage in those behaviors versus if it was always available and they always had access to watching their favorite stuff, then I really wouldn't have been able to put those demands on them in order to get to what they wanted. You know, another example is for any of you guys who do home ABA, you know, do you ever walk into a child's home and the child's on the iPad? You know, as soon as the child's on the iPad, what do you do? Usually the thought that goes through my head is, oh crap, now I've got to get them off the iPad, right? That's that establishing operation. So, you know, if I can create some motivation um, coming in the front door, even if they're on the iPad, as in, hey, I've brought my goodie bag with me and I've got some really cool things that fingers crossed are going to compete with that iPad. So you'll disconnect and come towards me instead. That's all also trying to create some motivation um, or seeing if parents can keep them off of the iPad until after your session is also an idea so that you can get that motivation, et cetera. Um, so, you know, that fourth contingency, you know, just as a summary, you can capture um, that motivation or you can contrive the motivation. What's the difference? Um, capturing that motivation is really just, you know what, it's happening in the moment. So, you know, the child is running towards the iPad. In my head, I'm like, haha, the child wants the iPad. I know that I can use this iPad. So, you know, I might, you know, go in and say, okay, hey, I'm stepping in your way. You know, oh, what do you want? Oh, you want the iPad? Here you go. Or, hey, let's, let's do this and this, and then you can have the iPad. I haven't created motivation for the iPad. I've really just stepped in and captured that motivation. In terms of contriving motivation, that's a little bit more tricky. It's not so tricky. It's just really takes a lot of creativity. Um, and what do I mean by that? So, you know, I really want to create motivation for a student asking for his jacket, for instance. Why does somebody want to ask for a jacket? I don't get it, right? But if I said, hey, let's go to the park. It's cold outside. Boom. There we go. I've just created motivation for that jacket. Yeah, or you can, you know, use 
simple toys that you can give them a little bit of that they might really enjoy um, and then kind of hold off on it and wait for like a response or an engagement or whatever that skill is that you're looking for. Um, but you're trying to find that thing that's like, oh, like maybe they'll be motivated for this, but you, it needs a little bit more contriving of setting up the situation of giving them a little taste um, or giving them a reason to want something and then creating that motivation and then, you know, going into that three-term contingency. Sure, you're really good at that when you teach. You've got these um, wind-up toys that you use and you've also got these spinny tops and, you know, students can't access that without an adult. So, you know, Shira will spin it a little bit first and get the student interested and then it, it stops and the student's like, hey, I want more of this. And she's just contrived motivation for that and it's super cool. That's a good tip. So... <laughs> You know, as a summary, um, you know, an, EA, an EO determines what an individual wants at that particular moment in time. So how can I make someone motivated at that particular time? That's the establishing operation.